Worry is an addiction. It's a habit. It's undisciplined. It's what as shamans we have to reprogram ourselves with a new discipline, the discipline of celebration, the discipline of rejoicing. Martha had a bad habit. She worried too much. She was wound up too tight. She was carrying the world on her shoulders. She literally was buckled under from carrying that heavy weight, that burden all her life. Sisyphus pushing that rock up the hill. And just as he reaches the top of the hill, it falls down to the bottom and he has to start all over. The perpetual, it's always a struggle pushing that big boulder up the hill. That's Martha, the martyr. It's not surprising that the Marthas of the world end up bitter. They end up as whiners, as victims, as pessimists. They expect the worst. That's what despair is. You're trapped in a world of negativity. You have a chip on your shoulder. We read the piece a few sessions ago from the Hopi Elder. Don't take anything personally, least of all yourself. She does take things personally. She expects to lose. She expects to have to carry the burden. She expects to get the short end of the stick. It's like there was a cartoon character years and years ago who always had a cloud over his head. Everywhere he went, the cloud went with him. It was his little cloud about as wide as his shoulders. That's what these people are like. They're trapped in a world of darkness, of heaviness, of despair. This cancerous toxicity poisons their environment. There can be 99% good in this room, and they'll fixate on the 1% that's not quite as good as they would like it to be. They're sitting on this throne of judgment. It's a self-curse. It's the wrong choice. It's the opposite of the shaman discipline of rejoicing and celebration. As shamans, we have the power to cultivate a new discipline, a new choice, moment by moment by moment, and clear away that dark cloud, lift off that heavy coat, and replace it with a new garment of brightness and praise and rejoicing. When I was a graduate student, uh, the professor who uh, I was his research assistant and his teaching assistant, he was a consultant to the Israeli communal society, the kibbutz society. They were going through a major uh, redesigning their organization. So he made several trips to uh, Israel and back. But he came back so sad because he said, yes, they celebrate. Yes, they know how to have fun. Yes, they know how to rejoice. But what they really know how to do better than anything is mourn. It made him so sad that this was uh, the heritage of his people. And it's ironic. I looked up uh, the story of Jacob in the Old Testament becoming Israel after he had wrestled all night with the angel of the Lord. And after he wrestled, the, the angel told him before he departed, your name isn't Jacob anymore, your name is now Israel. What the name Israel means is one who struggles with God. The very name of the Jewish state, Israel, inherent in that name is the whole addiction to struggling. The tendency towards mourning rather than celebration. The discipline of the shaman is the discipline of celebration, of rejoicing, of reprogramming ourselves from our genetic heritage or from our own negative habits from the past. Moving away from struggle, from doing, from paying dues, from heaviness, from darkness, from bitterness, from despair to the new habit patterns, the new choices of celebration, rejoicing, brightness.